Hello, this is Paul from Foresight Tech. In this lecture, I was going to introduce uh, the most important theory in calculus. We call the fundamental theory of calculus. And this theory link CAC1 and CAC2 together. The Isaac Newton made the greatest contribution to the theory. And we have two parts of the theory. The first part, we deal with derived. Okay, so in this lecture, we were going to use this part, part one of the fundamental theorems to find the derivatives. So here's a summary for what is the part one of fundamental. So first, we suppose f is a continuous function on a, b, okay, f. And then we're going to define a function. So this function is an integral function. Integral, okay, it's an integral. So the integral, the integral function f(x) is continuous, right? The first, uh, and then uh, we look at the limit. The lower limit is a, which is a fixed number. No matter uh, what is the number is, it's just a constant number. And uh, the upper limit is x. So this is the single variable of this function, right? I mean, to give a continuous function, we do definite integral from a fixed number to variable. Okay, I will draw a graph to show what that is mean exactly. And the, if once we define this function, we say this function is continuous, it's very good, and the, we even can find the derivative of this function. So the derivative of this function is exact, exactly the integral function. Okay, and if you remember in Calc one, and if g take a derivative equal to f. What is g called? We call the enter derivative. Okay, is one enter derivative of f x because this is the most important. Uh, I will give you a rough proof. Okay, for this for this theory, and this theory exactly give us how to design the enter derivative. Okay, functions. So a rough proof, so like this. So we're going to give a rough proof. So first we need to find the derivative, right? So f is here. We use the definition of derivative. So we're going to what is uh, gx? Uh, gx is here. So the derivative. So the derivative of gx is this, right? Uh, should it be the limit. I take delta x is h, h plus zero. Delta y over delta x. Theta y this time is g x plus h minus g at x, okay, at x. So sorry, so this is uh, at x. And the theta x should be h, that's the definition, right? Okay, use the definition to find it. So this time I draw a graph to describe what is gx. To draw a graph, uh, so a little bit bigger graph here. If I simply draw this is the function y equals f x, and uh, the integral, okay, the domain is from a to b, and uh, this function is continuous. Yeah, definitely right. Okay, so what is g x? Okay, see g x is integral f. Uh, probably this time I need to change a little. So uh, this we call t right. So I change. This is a t. So here we use t to describe. So this is a y. Okay. The variable is t because I have to use t. <coughs> and uh, this term, okay, what is uh, gx? Is integral from a to x. So I need to find uh, x. Okay. So I use this. If I say x is here, it's okay. X is between a and b. Okay. So we're going to see. And this area should be what? Should be the integral a to x. Okay, so this is gx. So what is g? I mean, this is the area start from a, stop at x. Okay, this we call the integral. And then we look at what is g x to h. x to h is like this. If this is a x plus h, so we're going to look at the big one. Okay, and the areas of start from a and at x plus h, this big one is x is g, the function g at x plus h. The difference we can see, this is the difference, right? Okay, this is the difference. 
so this is the numerate I put it there and uh, so is the limit uh, at this part is zero the bottom is x is uh, h and uh, this distance is at here right so this time is a, a definite integral from x to x plus h so from x to x plus h the integral function is f t so f t and dt okay so now to these calculations so we need to use the results okay, I put the results here um, so I say here okay is a, a result we need to use this result and uh, we say there exist uh, exist uh, a point we use I guess star at H why because this point is between this interval from I guess to I guess plus H or I guess to I guess plus H we definitely can find this. This point is depends on h. If h moves, this point will move. So there exists this point, and uh, such that this result is correct. This result, which means the the this okay. That's exactly what we look at at this top. Okay, this is a value, right? So I guess to I guess plus h. F T D T. I look at this top. We can change this top to another. Is this? Is just the function I guess stop at H. Okay, and this times H means what? Uh, this is a uh, here. If I say uh, I guess star is at here. Okay, at some point. If this is the point. I guess uh, star and uh, related to h. So what is this function? What is f at this? f at this is this height. Okay, this two. And this is height times h. h is this winds. So look at uh, what is this exactly mean? This exactly means uh, the area of this. The area of this rectangle. Okay, the area of this rectangle. Have you find? I mean, this uh, area of the rectangle equals this uh, uh, area under the curve. So how to get these results? So we definitely can, but uh, I skip a little bit. Okay. So these results we can get from. Uh, remember this intermediate, intermediate uh, value theory. This is from CAC 1, okay? From CAC 1, we can find these results. And uh, now we use this, put it to here, we can change. Now, what do we get? So this time, this can get is the limit h approach 0, h. And this, we use this results, which means f. I guess dot at h times h, right? Okay, these are results we can use to this step. And now we can simplify by cancel the common factor the h. And then what do we get? Is exactly the limit, right? This time is exactly the limit h approach zero. The only add f, I guess stop. Okay? So how about this limit? Uh, we can imagine. So h is the distance, okay, is the in the range of the interval. If h approach zero, this interval will goes to zero. Okay, I mean the what? I mean this any middle point will definitely approach x. Okay, it's easy to see this. I mean the h gets dot. This definitely will approach x as h approach zero. Okay, this result is easy to get. I use this to here this step. So now. And then of course, f is a continuous function, so we have, right? Okay, so we get this result is f at x. Okay, this is approach to x plus to the here. And this is the, is this the result? Yeah, definitely. Okay, from the beginning, we get a derivative of g exactly equals h, if equals fx. Okay, so this is the rough proof. And then I will give you three examples.
three questions. So how do you use the part one fundamental? Okay, so here is the first example. So look at these questions. We use the part one fundamental, so we're going to do what? We find the derivative, okay? And the part two, the fundamental tell us this is, of course, is this exactly follow the part one of fundamental? So remember, you have a, go back a little bit. So we have to look at this function. It's really integral with this form, means the, the integral function is continuous. The first, okay, we look at the three parts. So the first is the integral function continue. The second is the lower limit is a fixed number. The third is the upper limit is a single variable. If this follows, we have the results. Okay. Look at it. Is this the first? So this is the integral function. If I say this is a g, uh, no, no, x, gt, right? Good. I use gt. Is this gt continuous? Yes, definitely. So this gt is continuous is continuous. So the first. The second we look at the lower limit. Is this a fixed number? Yes, this is a fixed number, right? Definitely. So the second follow. The third, is this upper limit a single variable in the function? Yes. So this is a single variable. This is a single variable. Is the variable here? Is the single or we say is the single variable? Definitely. So now we mean the one, two, three, three parts exactly follow uh, the fundamental part one. And then we follow the part one, we have these results. <coughs> uh, the result is f uh, derivative, okay, is what? Is the integral function here. Is g add what? Add this x. g add x. Okay, so we put log in. g is there. Okay, so this is the result. And the x plus x raised to the third power. Okay, if you follow, if we just verify uh, one, two, three, did three parts follow the fundamental part one, and then definitely exactly get the answer, right? Now we look at the second. The second day before the second example, I have to show you one uh, very useful result. This is an integral property. Okay, one more property. So we look at this. If we do integration from A to B, if we change it, if we switch the order from B to A, that's because the the opposite. Okay, we go to the opposite. Um, of course, I will have to show why. Okay, so I show you a proof here. I put uh, a proof. Okay. This is easy to get. So if the left, the add the right equals zero, and then it's opposite, right? So we use that. So that's the one we were going to use. Uh, I will just uh, add these two together. So uh, add the left, the right, which means what? Uh, here, A, B, F, X, D, X. Add the right, okay, from B to A f x dx. If I add these two together, we get a zero. Then means this is correct, right? Is this a zero? We're going to see a to b, b to a. So like uh, this is the internal, uh, the addition sum. I remember the addition, uh, addition rule. We use addition rule. So this goes from a to a, from a to a, and uh, f x dx. And what does this mean? A to A is no. The width is goes to zero, right? So this definitely goes to zero. Okay, and definitely it is the proof for this. Okay, it is the proof. And now we have to use this result. Uh, this result. Uh, another. Okay, so this property another understand. And uh, if we switch the order, the integration direction from the right to the left, right? This means the word. And this one third x goes to negative. This third x is positive, this third x is negative. So that goes to negative. Okay. Okay, this is not understand. Now we look at this. If we define this uh, function, this is integral. Okay, look at it. The limit is variable. And uh, this is a function, this is integral. How do you find the derivative? 
we're going to verify a uh, look at this so first we verify this integral function if I say this is the GT is it continuous yes it is continuous good good but look at the look at the lower limit so be careful this time this is not a fixed number right this is not a fixed number I mean the, this one cannot follow the theory right and also another is cannot follow this is a, the up limit this is not the variable is not the variable the variable goes to here the variable goes to there I mean the word this does not right this does not this does not um, means we have to change something how do you change this time but look at it if we switch the integration direction goes to negative if we switch 0 and the x definitely both of them can follow okay. so all we need is just a switch okay so I'll just switch use this property we can do this uh, I change the x if I switch the integral so from 0 integral to x remember what we need to put we need to put the negative okay so this time um, of course I will use GT this time I just use GT and the DT oh that's good this time and these uh, form exactly follow uh, the fundamental right this one is exactly follow fundamental exactly follow fundamental why and this is a fixed number and that the up limit is the variable and that this is the continuous function okay so we can take a derivative of this so now we're going to take a derivative so now easy f take a derivative remember this okay take a derivative is negative derivative at these functions equals negative 0 x g t d t take a derivative okay this is from calculus 1 and then now this part is from fundamental right okay fundamental tells us this is negative g at uh, x of course g at x is there which means uh, square root of 1 plus second uh, at x okay so this is the second example <coughs> look at one more and uh, this is the chain rule we need to use okay before we go into this example we need to go over a little bit in calc 1 so here uh, this is a review of calc 1 so we look at these functions complicated so f at gx this is the composition right composition of the functions composite function we say composite function take a derivative this is the derivative of a composition composite function chain rule tells us okay this is the outer function this is the inner function okay derivative of the composite is the out the derivative of the out function times derivative of the inner right remember this is a prime notation okay so this is very easy to use very very important in calc 1 so now we're going to use that to here so uh, to this function so first we look at it. this is a continuous that's good right if I say uh, this is a continuous so this is good this is a continuous function can continuous function good and uh, this time this is a fixed number okay a fixed number but be careful so this is the what up limit is not a single so this time is not a single is not a single variable of x is what okay this time is the inner function so this is what we call the uh, inner function what does it mean uh, this is not a single okay it's not a the single variable not the single variable so this time is a composite function so composite function I wrote the composite function of this so what is the composite I set up this is the inner function u right okay I wrote this if this is y so that one exactly equals composite function which means a y 
equals uh, this is y y equals uh, mm, here uh, I said that the outer is a function is uh, I say is f at u okay so f is the outer function what is the outer function the integral is the outer functions if you set up this is a u so this goes to integration from 1 to u a or n t and the dt and then what is u the inner function and the u equal this u if i say the inner is gx okay so i put it here the inner gx what is gx is there is e raised to the x okay this is very important so we look at it i have to use this setup okay so you can understand it. this is a composite function right it's a composite function now good what do we need to do so this is a composite function so this is a y okay i said this is a y now we need to use the chain rule y okay take a derivative to x is a y take a derivative to what uh, f take a derivative to u and then u take a derivative to x okay it's the chain rule now what we need to do is here uh, h take a derivative to x okay h is the composition function what is the composition is here h is y y is f at u u is gx so i put it this see this is h and now exactly follow the chamber rule okay so you use the chamber rule uh what is this chamber rule tells us the derivative of the outer function right times the derivative of the inner function so we we'll look at it so first what is this okay what is derivative of the outer uh, this one i put the uh, i put the here to here to do calculation this means uh, f take a derivative to u and then u at uh, gx that the definition right so f the outer function take a derivative is there we know what that uh, this is the function take a derivative to u follow part one of the fundamental which means ln at u right okay good this is a ln at a u and then to focusing u at a gx okay and what that is mean this means ln at a gx what is gx is e raised to the x power so we get it so this is ln e raised to the x power and then you know this we can simplify is x right so the first we get it. uh what is the second so the second is easy to do calculation g is there okay so this means e raised to the x take a derivative equals it itself okay and then we have the results done the first is x the second day is e is to the x i will find h take a derivative equals to here okay that's all. Thank you.